How about a single best chart to show us where we are? The United Kingdom inflation that Governor Carney's worried about in red, elevated, sterling, weaker, rolling over, Yellen, rolling over inflation as well. And maybe it's about Yellen and the Clarida critique. Richard Clarida with us of Columbia in PIMCO as well. And you know when you see the word critique in your world, that means only one thing, the giant of Chicago, Robert <laughs> Lucas yeah. and the Lucas critique. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, we had a Lucas moment yesterday. You can't design policy just based on the historical back view. Are we dealing with orthodox economics now? Or like the Lucas critique, are we flying blind? Because we don't know what our history is. Wow, boy, 30-second answer on that. No, that, I need more than that. Give oh, me 42 oh, okay. seconds. So, so, yeah, so the Lucas critique says history can be misleading if you're trying to change your regime. And I think that that's a challenge for the Fed right now because I think in a lot of ways the world fundamentally changed <clears throat> since 07. And in a low rate or zero rate or negative rate right. world, in a QE world, the Q, QE is a great example. Central banks have really never done QE before. So any historical correlations and regressions you run aren't going to be that helpful. And that's why even though the Fed has laid out a very sensible to me plan for reducing the balance sheet, they don't know, we really don't know how it's going to work. And I think that, I think that right now that's right. a good example of the Lucas critique. Uh, rising and lowering rates, we know how that works. We've done that a gazillion times. But shrinking a $4 trillion balance sheet right. to a $2 trillion balance sheet uh, is something that's not been done. Jim Bullard at the St. Louis Fed talks about regime change. My paper yeah. of the summer is Olivier Blanchard going back and looking at your world you invented, yeah. the DSGE, yeah. and looking at what he did with summers with labor dynamics yeah. and hysteresis. If I look at this soup, are we flying blind? Uh, we're flying with a blindfold for sure. I think, I think maybe we're not flying blind. I think you have to get basically where we are right now is we have a fully employed economy with inflation close to but a little bit below 2%. So I don't think we're fundamentally on the wrong track, but I do think that people are perhaps too relaxed about getting from here to there over the next five years. Right, so how long will it take, Richard? I know it's the impossible question, but I'm looking at break-evens, and I know Tom is comparing them, you know, the U.K., but yeah. I simply have a U.S. break-even, two-year, five-year, and ten-year. We'll push it out for our radio listeners. Yeah. What does this chart tell us about the future? Well, I think what this chart tells us about the future, Francine, uh, is in a lot of ways, as we've discussed, you know, really the Fed and the global economy is driving without a spare tire right now. I think Tommy years ago did it like flying on one engine. So we're driving without a spare tire right now. So in particular, in the next downturn, whenever it is, and you and I don't know when it is, traditionally central banks cut rates, you get fiscal stimulus. We don't have a lot of room to cut rates. We don't have a lot of room for fiscal stimulus. And so that is why I think well, the next three to five years are going to be a challenge.